Good morning. And on behalf of Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda Cultural Center, I welcome you to the webinar on maintaining business accounts with Tally and GST. This is a two days webinar. Today, we are going to focus on how we are going to maintain our accounts in Tally electronically. And tomorrow we'll be having another session that will be exclusively on GST. And the time is at 7 p.m. onwards. So we shall start now. Today's agenda is, so we have today's agenda. Introduction to Tally. Then we have companies and configuration and company features we will discuss. Masters and Tally approach to GST. Then little bit of e-way bill and how to enter your transaction in vouchers. This is today's session's agenda. Now, what we'll do is, Firstly, most of you, you may not uh, have used Tally and how Tally works and why do we need Tally. See, let us understand what is Tally. Here, Tally is an accounting package that helps to maintain accounts electronically. And also, it reduces the workload of maintaining the accounts manually. Errors and mistakes can be checked and corrected easily. How? We will show you through a live demo on time. So let us see. I'm going to share the screen to you all so that you can see it. So here we have Tally. I've already created a company. So what happens is whenever you are going to work with Tally, you have to open Tally software and you have to create. So this is the screen where you get to see. We have the title bar, we have the horizontal button bar, all the buttons, all the keys, function keys you'll get here. Then we have the vertical button bar and the function keys that you're going to use. Initially, if I have not created a company, my company will look in this way. Here, I just need to go to company info screen. When I go to company info screen, here we have the options. Whether you want to select company, you want to create company, what do you want? And related to your talent. So this is how from this particular screen, you will create a company. Now, let me again tell you regarding the regarding the accounting tally, accounting software that this tally it will help you to you know maintain the accounts manually and also if you have any error and mistakes how will you correct usually in manual accounting when i maintain the accounts i will prepare you know the uh, book ledgers then journal then i have the other statesmen i have to uh, prepare like the balance sheets the trial balance so to say the profit and loss account or the income and expenses account manually have to write each and every book if any error mistakes that occurs what happen is i have to rectify there and in each and every book i have to correct my mistakes time consuming a lot of labor work but in tally what happened if i have any mistakes that i have done what will i do i will correct there and then how let's say let us check and see i don't have in with the tally software i don't have to create the other books of accounts or i don't have to you know i don't have i, I don't have to uh, create the balance sheet or uh, maintain it separately. So now let's see that I want to correct my mistakes here. If I correct my mistakes, what will I do? Let's say, let me check my balance sheet. And if you are from, you know, you're already an accountant and you're maintaining the accounts, you will know what is liabilities and assets. So let us see this one in detail. If I want in detail, 
from the vertical button bar, I will click on detail option. Okay, so let us check. Anything that comes minus, it means something fishy, something wrong is there. Regarding the duties and taxes, later it's related to the tax. First, let's see here. I have my fixed assets. So these are my fixed asset or the valuable things owned by the business so that it can run its business or organization. Then here, let's see, I have the current asset. Here I find, oh, I have one mistake. There's a mistake in land. If it's in manual accounting, I have to go in all the books of account and correct. But in tally, here only I can correct. How? Here. And I get to see. There's a mistake here. I have made a payment while purchasing the land. And I will cor uh, correct this mistake here and see. Here, by mistake, I have created the land under current assets. What I can do? I can change this and make to fixed assets. And after that, when the correction is done, here, what happens? If I go back to my, you know, balance sheet, if I check, I find that land is in fixed asset. This is one way of correcting your error and mistake and automatically it will update. See, I don't have to cancel anything. I don't have to redo anything, which takes a lot of time to do. Let's say next, let me go to profit and loss account. Okay, when I go to profit and loss account, again, I will check that here I have Dividend on Tata shares. So these dividend, these are the incomes that we get by investing our money on shares. So here I find there's a mistake. Usually what happened in manual accounting, you have to correct your ledgers, your entries. Then after that, you have to correct all the books of accounts, the trial balance or the balance sheet or income and expenditure statement you have to correct. But here that directly I go to my uh, you know, profit and loss account. And then here I get to see. Obviously, the problem is on dividend on Tata shares. So I will correct my mistake here. So here I'll just correct this control and enter key. Then here it is an expense. It's showing here by mistake I've entered on in that expense. I will change this immediately when I change what happened. Everything will be automatically corrected. It will be correct. And after that, I check my profit and loss. I find, okay, my dividend on Tata shares, it has come on income and on the income side. This is how it's being done. Now, let us move to the next. When we talk about the tally, we should know the features of tally and why we want to use tally for maintaining an accounts. Firstly, remote access. A tally software will allow you to access your data remotely from any client machine. Suppose you have installed your tally software in a server in a main machine and due to some reason, maybe in the same building, I. I cannot go to my main machine. I can access this to, from my client. Okay. Then, simplified installation process to install the Tally software. Very simple. Just tip of your click and your software will be installed. New licensing mechanism here. When you buy other software, there are so many procedures and also you will get the product key or sometimes what happened, you have the cracked version. But believe me, Tally, there is no cracked version. Rather, if I want to install a Tally software, you will get a license on your email address. The email address will be your license to activate Tally software. Control Center. At Tally, what happens is when I install my software, I can control. Being the administrator account, I can control my software to which machine I want to share, how will I share, and what are the things that I need to activate, deactivate. Here, control center, the administrator account user will have the control. Support center. In Tally, we have the support center. Any problem related to Tally, queries related to the software, I can go directly to the support center and link myself with the, with the person who are 
who can really give the answer to my queries. Enhanced look, as you know, you have seen just now, it's very easy and you know, it's very user friendly. Everything is there on your screen. You just look into your screen, you will know what to do. Enhanced payroll compliance. This is the feature which the tally gives you where, you know, it allows you to do the complex calculation on the salaries that you're paying to your employees and the benefits of your employees related to the salaries. All it can be done here. Then excise for manufacturers, how the tax will be calculated, the duties tax will be calculated for manufacturer. Everything is inbuilt and you just need to enter the transaction. It will be done by itself. Next, auditor's edition, especially for those who are maintaining the accounts for you, what happened? Towards the end of this, uh, you know, financial year, you have to submit the, you know, you have to get verify, uh, you verify your accounts statement from the auditors or from the chartered accountant. In Tally, what you can do, you can give the auditors or the chartered accountant the auditor's edition of your Tally and he will check all your transactions and books of accounts. Then enhance tax deduction at source. Any tax that needs to be deducted before the uh, crossing the threshold limit of your business, it can be done beforehand and this feature is available in Tally. Lastly, we have the Tally.net. What is the Tally.net? During this pandemic, if you are an accountant, you must be, you must have faced some problem, right? Uh, uh, let's say, for example, I'm in Kolkata, but my accounts work are in Shillong. How will I get access to my work? Through tally.net, you need to connect yourself and you can solve the accounts work, which is there in Meghalaya and Shillong, being yourself in Kolkata. So this is the, these are the features of Tally. Why do we need to use Tally? What are the advantages? These are the advantages Tally above other softwares or other method of maintaining the accounts. Here we have company configurations and features. What are these? These are the settings that needs to be activated and deactivate according to the needs of the business. Okay, let me just show you. Here, I have my company here. Now, from my keyboard, I can press from the keyboard, the keys, or from the vertical button bar, I can go for the configuration. When I go for the configuration here, all the configurations, general configuration related to any, you know, uh, small issues or problems, you can go from general uh, regarding the numeric symbol here, accounts inventory here. Okay. And uh, regarding the transactions that you will enter here. So these are the configurations that you make this, that you can make the settings activate or deactivate. Now, what happens in company configuration? In company configuration, any settings that you activate or deactivate, it will affect to your tally software that you have installed in that particular machine. Okay, the settings will be there. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now, for company features. In company features, what happened? You can go with from vertical button bar company features or you can press from the keyboard. When I go to company features, it will give me these features. Okay, now here when I press enter or when I go inside this, anything related to your accounts work, okay, which feature you want to activate, it will be activated. And you have to just make yes, no. Keep in mind this that in accounting feature or the features that we activate here through company features, it will affect to your company that you're opening, not to your tally software, okay, to the company that you have created on the screen to that company it will be affected 
So here I can activate any features. I don't want the stocks to maintain. I want only accounts related work, income and expenses work to maintain. I don't want to know the profit and loss, but I want to, in terms of profit and loss, I want to know uh, in terms of uh, incomes, income and expenses, I can activate here. Maintains accounts only. Use income and expenses instead of profit and loss, I can do here. Okay, likewise. Now, if I want to maintain regarding the uh, information related to the salaries, I can go maintain payroll, make this one yes, it will be done. Now, if I have to, uh, you know, activate, deactivate anything related to the stocks, I will go to inventory. Here you could see the function key F2. I can press from the keyboard or you click from here. So here I'll press F2. So anything related to the stocks inventory, it will be from inventory features. So inventory features, accounting features, statutory taxations, all these, they come under company features. And next, if I want to go for tax, I'll go F3 and activate from here related to the GST or tax. So this is how you will do it in Tal. Now we move on to masters. What are these masters? These are the structures or components of company. In Tally, by default, when you open Tally, there will be a blank screen. You have to create a company. After you have created a company, then you will get a gateway of Tally. In a gateway of Tally, by default, it will show accounts information and inventory information. So let us see this accounts information and inventory information. Here, when we talk about the masters, here you can see the masters. I have accounts info and inventory info. Accounts info means you will create all the ledgers related to accounts in accounts info. You will create all the data related to the in inventory or the stocks in inventory info. Okay, so now let me just show you one thing. I have a company here which I've already created beforehand and it's just a fresh company, no transaction, nothing. So what happens here if I go to my balance sheet? Nothing will be there, blank, because I've not entered anything yet, okay? Likewise, if I go to any statements, it will be blank. If I want to work with Tally, I have to provide the Tally with data and components or structure or information. How will I do from masters? Suppose, let's say I want to create masters. I'll go to accounts info. In accounts info, we have groups and ledgers. And if you must be wondering why this blank area here, there are few things that you need to activate according to re your requirement. Business, you can activate, it will come here. If you don't need, it will not come. So for now, let's see groups. Let me just explain you in short. What are groups? In manual accounting, whenever we record a transaction, let's say, for example, pay salary 10,000. One account will be salary account. The other account will be cash account. So in manual accounting, we classify, uh, we call these two uh, accounts as ledgers. We refer them. And we have to classify them under the personal account, nominal account, and real account. But in Tally, whenever you create any ledger, all the ledgers will be classified under groups. Let me just show you. Here we have the function. Functions here, it will ask you to enter in single group or multiple. In a single group, what happens? A detailed information you will get to enter. In multiple group means it will allow you at once to create everything that you want under one single group. Now, here, let's say for the groups, anything that you create, I will go with display. 
any ledger that you create, they will be classified not under personal, real or nominal. They will be classified under these groups. If anything related to the capital, like capital account of, let's say, measures Sony's and Sons. So that capital of uh, Sony's and Sons will be classified under capital account. I have my furniture. My furniture will be classified under fixed asset. Likewise, we have here 27 predefined groups. Now, let us move to the ledger. Let me show you how to create. So here we have ledgers. Let me see how many ledgers I have. By default, I have or the tally here will have two predefined ledgers, cash and profit and loss account. Any masters, any ledger you want to create, you want to use for your transaction, you can create before entering the transaction or you can create after uh, while entering the transaction. Let me repeat, before entering the transaction or during the transaction. So let me just show you one, how to create before the transaction. Here, for creating, I can choose any option. I can go with create single. Here, suppose let me give rent paid. Rent paid is an expense. How will I classify it under indirect expense? So here I will go indirect expenses. Like that, I have created enter, enter, and accept. Or you press Control A to accept all. Okay? And this is single entry. Okay? In single mode. One by one, you have to create. But let's say I want to create all at once. I want to create all at once. What will I do? I will go multiple ledger. Here, I'll take one group. Let's say I'll take with indirect uh, income. So what are my indirect income? Like I have a discount received. Okay. Discount received. Then I can create here, let's say, commission received. Okay. So all these will come. Just one time I have to mention indirect income. But the more, the most preferable is single mode because any activation related to the settings any additional uh, information you get it in your single mode okay so this is how the ledger or the masters is being created now approach to gst since you know maintaining the accounts nowadays first thing that comes in your mind is your gst how will i you know ap apply or how the gst is applicable and how will i do and sort my problems with the gst with any software that i used in tally believe me when we talk about the gst tally is the best application of software that you can use in order to you know to solve your any problems related to the tax on GST. So here when we talk about the GST, GST is goods and services tax. Here, it is a consumption based and is registered with GST, which is pan based number consisting of 15 alpha numeric. Now when I say consumption based, you consume and you you have to pay the tax or the tax will be levied. Now, and it's registered with a pound. How this registration is done? And what are the requirements? Let us see. For GST registration, if you have a business, you know you have to register to the GST. So here, for the registration, Valid permanent account number, your PAN card is needed. A valid mobile number. Valid email address. Your prescribed document or information related to your mandatory information related to your registration during your registration. And then we have principal place of business. You have to mention the principal place of business. And jurisdiction details where your business jurisdiction is. Then 
a valid bank account and the IF, IFSC code, that is Indian financial system code that you need to give. And also, suppose your business is a, a partnership business, or you can say it is a joint business, or you know uh, there are trustees. So it's mandatory that at least one person information, one card, and details has to be submitted during registration of GST. And an authorized signature from that particular person who representing your business. This is about the registration. After that, I have registered myself with GST. This is the format of the GST that you will get. The first two initial letters, the state code. Here, the state code 17 I've given because it's a state code of Meghalaya. And then the 10 digit number here will be of your permanent account number, that is one card. Then the first, after that, followed by one. If your number is, you know, your business, you have only one business, one. If you have two, three, four business with the same pen card, then the numbers will change here. Then we have this alphabet Z by default and the checksum digit. Here we have the tax structure under GST. Here what happened, the tax structure under GST, we have the CGST. It stands for Central Goods and Services Tax. This tax is collected by the central government and is applicable on suppliers within the state. SGST is for State Goods and Services Tax, which is collected by the state government and is applicable on suppliers within the state. UTGST it stands for Union Territory and tax collected is by the central government and it is applicable within the union territory. IGST, it stands for integrated goods and services tax. This tax is shared between central and state and is applicable or on interstate and import transaction. Now, let us see the Let us see the GST rates. We have the GST rates here. We have 0% exempted. We have 3%, 5%, 12%, 18%, and 28%. Related to the tax and the structure of tax and GST, we will, I'll show you how it is applicable and tally. More in detail, you will get exclusively tomorrow on a second session. Now here, if the GST is 3%, so CGST will be 1.5, SGST 1.5. If it's 5%, CGST will be 2.5 and SGST 2.5. Like that for all it will be. Now, let us see here. We have application level of GST details in tally. How the GST details in tally is being applied. Now we have here, we have on transaction level, we have on accounting group level, we have on accounting ledger level, we have on stock group level, we have on stock item level, and we have on companies level. Let me show you how it's being applied, and I will show you how it's on company level, how is it on stock group level and accounting ledger level, okay? So here, I'll be sharing my screen to you. Here, What will I do? You companies level. In companies level, if I want to, you know, apply the GST, how will I do? I will go to, I'll just press F11, my company features, and I will go to statutory and taxation. 
Okay? Here, I will go with enable GST, you make yes. And here, set alter GST, make yes. This is company level of applying the GST details. Here, what happened? You have to mention uh, everything about the state. And then also here, you give all the information, the GST number of your business and everything. And one more thing that you need to give. Here it will be on company's level, you will have to activate this. Set all the GST, yes. Just make yes. The moment you make yes, it will allow you to apply the GST. What the GST rate will be for your business. This is if the GST rate is of one type. Suppose my business is having GST of 18% and it will not change. It will be 18% only. So I will mention my GST details level in company. Now, let me show you in accounting ledger level. In accounting ledger level, what happened? I will give my GST details and it will be applicable on ledger level. So I will go accounts info. I will go with the ledger and I will create. Let's say here I'm having a business. So for maintaining my own accounts for my business, I will need a computer, right? So what will I do? I will create one ledger for myself. So let's say I'm buying here one computer. Okay, Com computer. And let's say this computer, it's HP. And then this computer, it will be my fixed assets because I'm going to use for my business purpose. I'm not going to sell this. Okay. Here, inventory values. Will I consider this as my stocks? No, this is my uh, fixed asset. It will be my capital here. So no. Then here I will, you know, I will set the GST detail level. I'll make here yes. The moment I make here yes, it will ask me the description. Let's say this is my all in one computer. And the HSN code for this computer. So the uh, HSN code for the computer, it is, I have uh, written here, I have kept here, 8474, 8471. Then nature of transaction will be here. It will, it will be purchase taxable purchase taxable and the nature of goods how will you treat this i will treat this one as my capital goods then here i will mention how much is the gst here 18 percent. so 18 percent gst central tax will be nine state tax will be nine okay and this is goods then done so this is how I have created before my entry of my transaction. And also I have mentioned the, I have mentioned the GST details here. This is an accounting ledger. Okay. So now what I have to do is, what I have to do is next, I will show you on stock, a stock level on stock level. Where I will go, I will go to inventory info, information. Here, I will go to stock group. Okay. In the stock group, I will create. Okay. So, let's say I will create here speakers. Speaker. I'll be dealing with Bluetooth speaker. I will be selling it, purchasing it. So, stock group is speaker. Okay. Then after that, GST level, yes. So here I need to give the description of the speaker. So here will be my Bluetooth Bluetooth speaker. Okay. Done. Then HSN code. What is the HSN code? What is the HSN and SAC code? These are the codes that, you know, especially on any product that you're purchasing or you're selling it, there will be a code for each and every product. So that product 
will have the code and it's a hsn code in detail you will get to know tomorrow what is hsn code and how is it being uh, you know uh, applied to the commodities and all exclusively tomorrow you'll get it from our experts so but here whenever we are purchasing the goods or selling the goods whenever we have the stock with us we do have to mention the hsn code okay hsn code if it is followed in meghalaya if the number for hsn code let's say for the speakers it's 8515 this hsn code will be all over india nobody can change this okay so here and this tax detail it will be taxable and then here you just have to mention the gst let's say it's 18 percent this is how on the stock group level okay so these are the three levels i've shown you and in other levels also you can apply and uh, yes we will go now with uh, other things like for example we are done with this so one thing that's very important okay when i talk about the gst obviously i have to make transaction where i have to purchase the goods and sell the goods so for purchasing and selling the goods i have to you know create the ledgers so those gst ledgers you can create beforehand how to create beforehand before the transaction i have shown you few of the ledgers i will show you during the transaction okay so now let us move to our next topic here next agenda here we have the ev bill system what is ev bill system this is a system which you have to you know you have to provide an ev ev bill number whenever you are dealing with the stocks if selling of the stocks or your the movement of the stocks okay the value of the stocks exceed more than 50000 that time you have to give you have to mention the e bill number why and how is it goes it is in this way when we talk about the e bill let's say the person who is selling the goods they have to obtain the e bill number and then they will hand over that e bill number to a driver and then the tax official will verify that evil bill number during transit and then this evil after verifications and everything then it will reach to your destination so this is important now next the consequences of not generating evil bill if i don't generate evil bill if my stocks is below 50 50000 i don't need the ev bill but if it exceed i have to you know obtain the ev bill and how they op, uh, how the ev bill is obtained what are the procedures tomorrow everything you'll get from a gst expert now here if ev bill is not raised if the consignment value is more than 50000 then there will be a penalty of 10,000. Okay. Now, we move to our next agenda that is vouchers. What are these vouchers? You know, in manual accounting, when I have to record my transaction directly, I record in my books of accounts. Right. But here, any transaction that I need to record, I will record in vouchers. So here in tally, we have the voucher types like accounting voucher, inventory vouchers, orders vouchers, and other vouchers also are there. So let me just show you with accounting vouchers today, especially related with the stocks. I'm sharing you my screen so that you can see it. So here, in my tally, I will show you how to enter the transaction. Okay, uh, let's say, let me help you because uh, some of you, if you are joining for this session and you are running an organization, let's say you're running an organization, you don't, you know, 
you don't uh, sell the stocks you don't deal with the stocks in uh, buying or selling it but rather if you're purchasing also the uh, some of the stocks it will be as your fixed assets or your capital goods so let me show you how the entries or the transaction will be made let's say the computer remember we have entered computer hp now that is my fixed asset but i have to enter in my voucher in my transaction if i enter the in the transaction it will be shown on my statements other statements so what will i do here let me just show you this uh, statement okay for now here on my balance sheet i don't have anything here i don't have my fixed asset nothing i have here so with the transaction eventually when i do the transaction automatically it will appear in your all your statements so let's say here i have a, a transaction here accounting voucher okay so by default it will show payment voucher but i need to purchase asset for myself what will i do you can do it payment but you know the more convenient way since you can mention the gst and everything i will go to purchase voucher let's see here f9 okay i'll go to purchase voucher then here let's say i have purchased this one if i want to change the voucher date press f2 i want to purchase this one on 1st april 2020 type Accept. Supply number give one. Same date will come. Party account from whom we are purchasing this one. So let's say I'll purchase from Hada Enterprise. Beforehand, few of ledgers have entered here. Okay. Then let's say I'm purchasing from it, and they will ask me for the reference and everything. So I will enter here, and the detailed information about the suppliers is given here, and their GST. Okay. So now. I want to purchase. So what will I do? I will go. I'll press C. Computer has come. Okay. But this computer that I purchase, I want it. Okay. So let's say I'm purchasing it forty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. So obviously uh, they will add the central tax and the state tax but i don't have those ledgers to give here then what will i do this is here i will show you how to create your ledgers during transaction okay what will i do alt plus c okay then here i will create the c g s t so this one i'm creating how did i create i created by pressing alt plus c secondary creation i will go this one with duties and taxes so this one type of duty it's gst then what type of uh, tax is this this is central tax that's it no need to mention about the percentage because in stock level remember when we created computer account and a fixed asset and i'm so sorry uh, not stock level ledger level ledger accounting ledger level the gst is mentioned so here done then after that what will i do i will accept this so see here automatically it's coming because we have already mentioned the gst rate where in computer ledger while creating that now if i press state it's not coming or oh, plus c then here what will i do here i will create s g st then under duties and taxes under duties and taxes and this will be gst and then it will be this what type of tax is this this is state tax okay then enter not applicable enter accept c masters can be created before the transaction and during the transaction how to create uh, before the transaction i've shown you this is during the transaction okay so now i want to you know i want this transaction to be considered as fixed asset and not as for the stocks what will i do i will activate the features i will activate i will activate the features okay 
then what will i do here i will go with this is already see i'll just show you the difference here okay if i click here it will come in voucher mode here in voucher mode i will press f12 in f12 here i see it is ask, asking for press f12 for more information press f12 here i have the option which says allow expenses fixed assets in purchase voucher yes i can purchase my fixed asset i can enter it in my purchase voucher this is done okay make yes enter 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 and done okay so i'm done with this i hope this is clear to you all after you are done you can accept this transaction now let's say i have to purchase stocks i'm running a shop in my shop i'm selling goods and i need to mention how many quantities are there how many how many how many quantities are there and how uh, what are the things that i need to enter everything then what what will what will i do what what will i do is i will change this mode okay i will change this mode then i will go as invoice i will enter this one as invoice and then here i want to mention about the quantity i will go item quantity then here i need to change the date okay let's say f2 and i'm purchasing this goods on 3rd of april 2020 done this is my supplier invoice number if you have actual and uh, actual one you will enter this is just a dummy and sample okay then enter okay now here what will i do is i will enter but here it's coming the ledgers the name okay the party account name that i'm going to purchase from whom from the suppliers let's say again i'm purchasing it from hada it is the supplier who supplies electronic uh, you know uh, devices or you know the stocks i'll take that okay so here enter now few of the stocks i have already created and i will show you also how to create if it's needed so let us say that this is rosalind store this uh, business it deals with electronic devices i have uh, some of my electronic devices like a refrigerator i have the speakers i have the headphones television so from here what will i do let's say i have purchased a wireless bluetooth headset okay now how much quantity do i want to purchase let's say i want to purchase it 25 pieces the rate it costs 700 okay and amount is coming automatically the moment i press enter it's a must that you have to provide the accounting details okay how will i do i have not created beforehand so i will create now okay how will i create during the transaction i'm creating this alt plus c then i will create here purchase and then this one will be under purchase account okay and then here inventory value affected yes of course it will affect because i'm dealing with the stocks and these stocks i'm going to i'm purchasing it and in future i'm i'm going to sell it also okay then after that here see this is ledger accounting level of giving the gst rate i've already given in stock i will not give you so nothing to give here that's it then i'm done with this so here next let's see i have another headphone so here i'm purchasing this one let's say again for uh, 25 pieces and the rate of this is 650 here okay then automatically since i've created c purchases come okay 
Now let's say I have uh, just few days, uh, just yesterday, one stock it has come to my business. It's a new one, and I have not created beforehand. I need to create here during my transaction. What will I do? Or press C. Here, the moment I press, let's say there is a new stock, and that stock item it is the speaker JBL. Okay, this is O plus. Here, what is this? JBL O plus. It is a speaker. I will take speaker. Okay, how I'm going to sell and purchase this one in numbers. Then here, this is a stock item level of giving your GST details. I'm not giving here because I've already given in my stock group. So nothing to be given. That's it. So this one I have purchased for, let's say, five pieces. And the cost of this is 9,000, okay, uh, 999. So here, done my transaction. And this is purchase, okay? Now, this is the stock. Keep in mind, if you are in invoice mode here, invoice mode, it will be showing as voucher okay you can you know toggle you can change from voucher entry to invoice entry and then if you are inside this line it means you're still in stock item or stocks if you're outside this line then you it will allow you to enter the ledges other ledges then here let's say I need to, you know, when you go and buy things, then you show it, uh, uh, you know, you have to, um, it, it shows the GST, how much GST is being applicable, the CGST as GST. So I'll take here, CGST, I'll take, see, automatically it's calculating it, okay, as GST, this is the best part of tally, you know, it does everything automatically by itself. Now, if I want to see this one in details, and now the question that arises here, why I'm giving CGST and SGST? Why am I not giving IGST? Because keep in mind, when we purchase or we sell goods, you have to keep in mind whether it is in intrastate sales purchase or interstate sales purchase. If I'm buying these goods within Meghalaya, since I'm from Meghalaya, from Shillong, I'm buying it, it from within Meghalaya, then I will give CGST and SGST. Okay, let's say if I purchase the same commodities from outside. Okay, let's say I've purchased from Assam. That time, CGST, SGST will not be applicable. Rather, you have to pay the, I mean, uh, rather IGST will be applicable. Integrated goods and services stacks. So if I want to see the detailed information about it, here we have tax analysis. You just click here. Okay, and then if I want in details, go details. See, individually it's showing you for the item how much the central tax, state tax, and everything is showing you here. I hope this is clear to you all. Then, when I'm done with this, I will enter, enter, and then I will give my narration. Being goods purchase. Okay, if you want, you give. If you don't want, don't give. It's up to you. Now, here, my transaction. Now, let's say that I want to purchase, um, I'll purchase, I'll show you one more transaction, interstate. In interstate, what happened? Let's say, let's say, let me change the date. Let's say I purchase this one on fourth. And this is supplies number four. And then here, let me purchase this one. Let's say I'll purchase it from, okay, uh, let's say from Karnataka. Done. Then here, enter. Okay. Then here I will have, I'll purchase the goods. Let's say I have purchased the wireless Bluetooth. Okay. How much I've purchased? I've purchased for 20. And this, he gives me 700 done this purchase coming automatically and then let's say i have purchased jbl okay and this one 25 let's say um i'll be buying for 10 pieces 
Okay, it's coming. Then here, what happens? I will purchase, take, done. But now, which GST ledgers to be given here? Since I'm purchasing it from Karnataka and it's interstate sales, so I will take IGST. Do I have IGST? I don't have. I will create here during my transaction. Here, I GST. Okay. Here it will be under duties and tax. And here will be GST. And what is this? This is integrated. Okay. Here I have created. Then automatically it has calculated. Now you can see that I have entered action enter enter and accept you give narration and accept this is done okay now if i sell these goods i want to sell it how will i do you know tally it's a very user-friendly application you don't have to worry how will i remember so many function keys and all you just have to look into your screen this is a vertical button bar and here we have all the function keys. I want to go to sales. Click. I want to go to sales. Click. Then after that, press F2. Then here, I will mention the date. Let's say I have sold these goods on 5th. Then on 5th, I will sell this. So reference number you can give here. Want. Okay. And then here, to whom I'm selling this? Let's say if I sell within the state, okay, then let's say I'm selling it to Nazia and group. Then here I have to give all the detailed information, delivery node and everything. Here you mention it, okay. Then, okay, it will come all the information. Let's say I'm selling the wireless Bluetooth. Here I'm selling it for, let's say, 22 pieces and here I'm selling this uh, 800 okay and then here what happened I have to provide the accounting details since it is a sales voucher I will provide the ledger sales here so here do I have I don't have great during the transaction so sales and it will be under sales then after that, inventory values are affected? Yes, affected. Then GST applicable? I have already mentioned the GST in stock. So I will not give here anymore. Okay, I will just enter and accept this everything. Enter. Next, it is, let's say, JVM. Okay, uh, for three pieces. And then here it will be for 1200. Okay, done. Since, then take the accounting ledger done then since i'm selling within meghalaya so c i will give cgst and i will give sgst okay and if i want to see the details of it i can go into the you know tax analysis tax analysis i will get to see here and i will go with the detail here. see here it will show you the details of it done then enter give narration give if you want to give give it so that you will get additional information related to it let's say uh, being goods purchased on credit if you're purchasing this on credit on credit being goods purchased in cash you can mention this one okay so then enter and accept now let's see i have a transaction that i'm going to sell outside the state let's say i'm going to sell it to assam Okay, and then after that, here yeah, I'm sell, selling it uh, wireless uh, Bluetooth. Okay, I'm selling it for um, 20 pieces. Done. I'm sell, then I'll take the accounting ledger. Then I'm selling it the another uh, headphones. Okay wireless bluetooth headphones headset and uh, hp headphone okay then here i'm selling this also for 20 pieces and this will be i'm selling it with 750. Done. then sales 
Along with this, I've been selling the speaker. So this I'm selling it for eight pieces. And here, okay, then I'll just show you one thing which is very important, okay? Remember, I told you regarding the eway bill. Eway bill, it will come only if your transaction, your movement of your goods exceed 50,000. Till now, eway bill, it has not shown because our transaction it has come all below 40,000. So let's say our transaction, if it exceeds, okay, if it exceeds, exceed more than uh, more than uh, 50,000 then what will happen okay so here or for that matter what i can do i'll just show you so that i can show you the evable okay so here let me add one more of my stock, okay? Let's say I have, uh, I'm selling it the, one of the, uh, you know, the refrigerator. And for this, I have to purchase first, okay? So what will I do is, I will add here, let's say for um, 12 numbers of, Bluetooth speaker. See, it has crossed that 50,000. The moment it crossed that 50,000, see, could you see here? Provide GST available details. Yes. So enter, enter. To whom I'm selling this? To Kamakya. Okay. This is an Assam. So what will I do? I will give IGST, integrated tax. Okay. If I want to see the details of this, then what will happen? I will need to go to tax analysis and go for details here individually it will show okay now here enter here it will ask provide gst details or evable details if i give yes here i have to mention the bill from our site okay the address and everything and bill to whom come up here got it and then here the place, address to, pin code and everything you give, distance in kilometers, you have to mention this. Okay, for the EV bill, the distance, you know, uh, to generate the EV bill, you have to mention the distance also. Let's say the distance here, it is 200. Okay, then here I have to give the transporter name. Let's say this is uh, Meghalaya Transport. transport okay then the transporter id you have to give here okay whatever the transporter id you have to mention you have to give you will give it here let's say i'll just give a dummy one here okay then enter then the vehicle number you have to give or you can uh, you have to give here for now for me it's just a you know sample a dummy one so i may omit this one also then regular enter enter that's it this is how the ev bill you have to mention during the movement your stocks that's it here it asking me mandatory fields that i need to give yes i have to give i have to uh, you know i have to um, generate and i have to give all the pin and proper pin and everything the number and everything and enter it if i enter that this warning will not come and this box will not appear it will not pop up in your transaction okay so then i'm done with this so this is how we do the transaction, okay? We do the in, uh, interstate and interstate and how the GST is being, you know, applied, uh, how it's applicable in tally and how we can activate and deactivate. So after I'm done with this, what I can do is if I go and check, see here, if I go and check here, I could see something has come on my you know statements yes or no here something has come here so i don't have to enter them directly but through my transactions everything will go to your books of accounts your statements so 
we have come to the end of our web today's webinar so and how you treat how you enter your transaction in tally i hope it has been uh, you know fruitful and more informative to you and if you want and if and if you want to know more about the you know tally and having the tally uh, so solutions i mean uh, you any questions related to tally software and you need solutions you can go with this you know you can go to this headline or this uh, website okay so you have any question okay so i have a question a uh, few of you you have asked the question so let me uh, reply to one uh, one of you one of our uh, participant uh, has asked this is tally modification required for linux yes it is required because the step will be different as it is different operating system okay and then we also have another question which is um, asked that what if we do not have a registered gstn number then let's say suppose if you don't have any uh, registered uh, gstn number it means you are not a taxable person okay uh, you may be still below the threshold limit because for applying for registering yourself to gst there's a threshold limit that threshold limit everything detailed tomorrow regarding the gst okay by our expert then but if you have crossed that threshold limit okay if you have crossed that threshold limit then you have to register yourself with the gst okay so then and i have a question here why tally is so unique okay unique and different from others because tally is a much user friendly software it allows you to enter all your you know your data uh, in a well mannered way and it is uh, you, you know to say it's efficiently uh, accessible you can access whenever or wherever it's needed okay for example let me just tell you i prepare my manual accounting i prepare the different different books of accounts after that you know above that also i some of uh, us we prepare in excel one by one we do we enter them any mistakes made anywhere in any field redo again so lots of time consuming lots of work for you okay double work for you so in G, uh, in tally as i've shown you okay as i've shown you just uh, i'll just uh, uh, tell you like i've shown you previously that we then uh, like i've shown you how uh, previously how when i find mistakes in balance sheet i can correct find mistakes in profit and loss i can correct okay so now we have come to the end of our webinar i hope and i have one more question why do we have to set or change the gst details when we purchase or sells any product actually is this about setting you set in stock group or any level that you want and about the changing it we purchase or sell i have created during the transaction because i have not created beforehand and let's say in uh, in my business i'm dealing with uh, you know with the stocks that have uh, you know different uh, gst then i will change that in my stock group in one of the stock group is 18% the other stock group is 12% there i will change and it's required because obviously i need to show the details of it yes or no uh, if i'm purchasing i will get my invoice i will get my detailed information from my suppliers he also he will show even if i'm selling it i have to show to my customer so it's needed to show and whenever you want to change it's very easy it will not affect anything in your in your you know in your books of accounts in your tally 
is it necessary to provide eva will i would say yes and no why yes if the goods if the movement of the goods is exceeding above 50000 yes you have to you know provide eva will remember the transaction i showed you in sales what happened it was just 44000 eva will that you know the indication that you know that um, the indication was not showing there that regarding the eva will the moment it exceed what happened we have to provide the eva will what do we do for sending to foreign country for foreign country actually these are uh, uh, again what happened is there will be some tax will be on this for the goods that you import or export that will be tomorrow purely tomorrow on gst on the tax that will be given to you okay so now also we have in our computer training in ram krishna mission vivekananda cultural center we do offer the online course and the offline course on tally with gst in detail everything if you need any help you please do contact us you can do any of these course online and offline i hope you you have had a very pleasant session with us and we hope to see you again in future thank you so much